All right, folks, we need to talk about this situation. And this situation surrounds Columbus Blue Jackets defenseman and one of the biggest trade pieces at this deadline in Vladislav Gavrikov and the asking price that has been revealed for him. Now, let's talk about Gavrikov for a second here because to me, he's probably the most misunderstood player available at this year's trade deadline. When a lot of people have been talking about Gavrikov, a lot of the talk has been about his stay-at-home defense and the defensive game and the big burly game that he provides, but that just hasn't really been the case this year. Gavrikov among all NHL defensemen is 112th in hits with 56. Now Gavrikov sits right now 45th among NHL defensemen in blocks with 89, but the Blue Jackets also are a really good block shot team. Right now in terms of the decor, he's third among defensemen on Columbus behind Goodbranson and Peak, who have 100 plus each. Now, what Gavrikov does lead the Blue Jackets decor in is takeaways right now of 19, which would put him at 61st place in the NHL, which isn't too bad either. But the thing is, Gavrikov's actual on-ice impact defensively has gotten worse and worse over these last three seasons. 2021, he was pretty exceptional. He had a 2.27 expected goals against per 60. Then in 2022, that went to a 2.93, so not as good. And then this last year with Columbus, he has a 3.12 expected goals against per 60. So every single year, especially as Columbus has gotten worse and worse, his defensive impact has suffered. And especially shorthanded, Gavrikov was amazing in 2021 with a 6.65 expected goals against per 60 shorthanded. Then in 2022, that went to 7.48. And then this year, it kind of tanked a little bit, going to 9.42. You want to have a lesser number there. And Gavrikov's 2021 season was a great blend of dual threat offense as well as defense. But he hasn't quite been that player since then. He might unlock that on a playoff team playing third pair of minutes but that asking price for him is really quite steep for a player that hasn't been this exceptional defensive defenseman. But the thing is, these poor results can also be attributed to the rise in time on ice. Back in 2021, he only played an average of 19 minutes and 24 seconds. Compare that to 2023, where he's playing 22 minutes a night for this Columbus team, and they're really depending on him to do as much as seemingly possible, which he obviously has not. But possibly on a middle pair, even a bottom pair, I think there's still a lot of opportunity for him to thrive. But let's talk here for a minute because I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. We all know how hard it is to protect your data and protect your passwords on the internet, but Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the dark web where criminals sell stolen information, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers, and it alerts you fast if it finds anything. And if someone opens a loan or a credit card in your name, Aura will give you real-time alerts. And Aura's VPN also allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browser history and personal information safe and encrypted. Aura also protects your devices from spyware, malware, and viruses, so it not only protects your identity, it also protects your devices too. So sit back and let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link. So make sure you go to Aura.com slash Gravite to start your free trial. You can also go to the link below in the description or scan the QR code. So what are you waiting for? Get protected by the all-in-one service in Aura. And thank you so much, Aura, for sponsoring today's video. The problem, though, becomes that asking price. And this tweet by NHL Watcher gives us a great idea of what the Blue Jackets are wanting in a Gavrikov trade. And when it comes to this, Chris Johnston on Insider Training says there is some sticker shock on the price of Gavrikov and Columbus are not budging on the ask. They'd like three draft picks, a first, a third, and a fourth. At least one team was told this week he's a pending UFA and doesn't seem interested in talking extension. So there we get the asking price for a defenseman that hasn't been great defensively since 2021, hasn't even been average defensively since 2021, and also isn't a big hit or a big burly defenseman like some teams want to put out there. But a first rounder, a third rounder, and a fourth round pick. I mean, that's pretty much what Ben Sherratt got but we already know how bad of a trade that was. To me, I feel like Gavrikov, even though he has some great qualities and play driving wise, I think is better than the stats might indicate. He's still a guy that if you give up a first, third, and fourth for, I don't think it's gonna work out. And here's the problem you have, because a first, third, and fourth round pick for a potential top pair defenseman doesn't seem too bad, but the problem is Gavrikov was at his best when he was playing middle pair minutes, wasn't being depended on as the guy to do pretty much everything. 
you could have him as maybe a middle pair player, but to give him a first, third, and fourth for a fourth defenseman probably that you likely won't have after this year, is that going to move the needle too much? And is that defensive game going to get back to that level that you're expecting? That will be the question here with Gavrikov, but honestly, giving up a first, third, and fourth for him for the player he is right now with Columbus doesn't seem wise to me. But that's just the thing. If a team like Boston is going to go after him, if they're going to end up putting him on like the middle pair on that right side, potentially, then that could maybe spark Gavrikov to get back to that 2021 level and truly unlock that dual threat offense and defense that we saw back then and the player that we saw back then. And I feel like if he does go in a middle pair, he will be a better player. But that's just the thing. If Columbus is not going to budge, if they're not going to budge on that asking price, I don't think anybody is even going to try to make a trade like this and give up a first, third, and fourth for him. Now, obviously, this asking price could go down and Columbus would be absolutely stupid to not just take a first for Gavrikov by the end of things. But let's say they do keep that asking price. Let's say they aren't going to budge on anything and they let Gavrikov go to free agency. It would be obviously a complete waste because I still think Gavrikov and all I've said here would still be pretty valuable for all, all, every NHL team out there. That asking price is lofty and that asking price isn't nothing again this is ben sherratt territory but i don't think even gravrikov has that pedigree that ben sherratt had back in that trade deadline so to me this would be a situation where i mean teams could just look at the ben sherratt situation and say oh Fl uh, florida gave up a first an unprotected first by the way that also might come back to bite them they gave up a prospect they gave up a, a middle round pick and that's that what they got they got a playoff round win but wasn't really much to do with ben Sherrod, and then he left in free agency and they weren't able to do anything with it and might lose their first round pick in a stacked draft i don't think many teams want to take that type of chance even if it's not a pick one year ahead of time even if it's just for this 2023 draft giving up a draft pick in such a good draft for gavrikov on top of more picks too will be a tough pill to swallow now if i was a gm and i'm like the boston bruins i would definitely want to go after a player like gavrikov but i feel like a second round pick and a middling prospect is a lot more likely and a lot more of what gavrikov should get for what his play actually is but again there's always the magic beans part of gavrikov's game that maybe it does get better on a contending team but i just feel like at the same time Gavrikov kind of is what he is. He's not this young 23-year-old defenseman. He's still up there, and to me, I don't think he's going to change too much within the season, but I do think he would still be a pretty solid playoff player, and maybe as a fifth, fourth defenseman would be excellent. But again, that asking price for a fifth or fourth defenseman for a guy you're only going to keep for half the year, it just makes no sense. Unless you're literally a team like Boston that has to go for it this season, there is no way in high heaven you are ever paying this price. But even if I was the Boston Bruins, I don't think I'd give them much more than a first round pick. I mean, it's probably going to be around 32nd, 31st, 30th overall. But even then, I think that's, especially in this draft, pretty solid for Gavrikov. I mean, for Columbus, this is a situation where they're still going to be rebuilding for a long time. Whether they extended Gavrikov, which obviously doesn't seem likely, but they have no reason to end up not trading him which to me even though there's a limited trade market this year i still think that does go against him and i feel like for boston they're in a situation where they can still play their cards right if they want to and i think boston would definitely make a lot of sense for gavrikov but a first round pick and maybe just like a d-level prospect like somebody like a ryan mass perhaps who's playing in the ohl this year like that's kind of what i would expect if I was Boston to give up in a trade for Gavrikov, even though I think he'd fit exceptionally well, you're giving up still a lot. And even in that trade, that's a lot less than what the Blue Jackets are asking for, for a player like Gavrikov. But honestly, I feel like a first round pick, Columbus should feel lucky to get that in a Gavrikov trade, honestly. And I know I'll get some comments for this, but I kind of have an interesting feeling about this whole Gavrikov situation. If Gavrikov's gonna cost a first rounder and like a good prospect on top of that, and if Luke Shen's gonna cost like a third round pick, I think I'd rather have Luke Shen. One, because of the winning pedigree that he's had recently and how good of a job he did in that bottom pair role with Tampa Bay and how solid he was, especially defensively and how he got the job done. And he didn't have to worry about him, especially with that play and that solid physical play. If I'm a team like Boston, sure, it would be fun to go after the big fish short of in Gavrikov, trade a first round pick, go completely in. But I feel like if they want to get a defensive player, there's better options than Gavrikov. If they want to go after a penalty killer, there's better options than Gavrikov. 
to me, Luke Shen, if you're getting him for like a third round pick, even if a third round pick and like an okay prospect, I might do that instead of Gavrikov at this point. Even though Gavrikov back in 2021 was amazing, if he gets to that level in a, on a team like Boston, then sure, I could see why you give up that trade package. But Luke Shen has won the Stanley Cup before. He's done it countless times. He's been in multiple playoff runs. And he's a guy that you can be still pretty dependable, even if he's definitely not in his prime. And to me, I think for a team like Boston, they don't have to feel pressured to go after that price. And that's why we haven't seen a Gavrikov trade. Nobody's out there wanting to trade a first, third, and fourth for Gavrikov. And that might come back to, to cost Columbus. Though I think eventually we'll probably see him trade it for a first round pick. But it's going to be really interesting because in this trade market, with all these teams out there, if Gavrikov isn't able to get to that defensive level back that he was in 2021, then I could see a lot of teams out there being like, oh, we want to get this defensive defenseman looking at Gavrikov and not really getting their guy because to me unless he gets that 2021 form i don't think he's going to be that shutdown guy that a lot of playoff teams are expecting or needing and there's a lot of options out there especially in the depth that could also fill that role let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think about this whole gavrikov situation what do you think about the asking price form what would you give up in a gavrikov trade if you were the gm of your favorite team let us know down below of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell share the video of all the hockey fans you guys know online and get the channel out there for the trade deadline talk and i'll see you in the next video or stream have a great one everyone and goodbye